In the chaos of the Ukraine-Russian war, amidst worries of misinformation and propaganda, people everywhere have a lot of unanswered questions. Are we on the brink of World War III? What can we do to help Ukraine? How many war crimes is Russia really committing today? And what on earth are the tactical unmanned aerial systems that the US is sending to Ukraine in their recent military assistance package? I'm Emily, also known as the Drone Angel, and today we'll be covering a topic a little more serious than usual. Just a little. Although commercial drones are pretty serious to me, they are my profession after all. It's really nothing compared to the devastation of full-scale war. But I'm a lover of drones first and a videographer second, so I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about the kamikaze killers called switchblade drones. Switchblade drones are a kind of weapon known as loitering munition. We will call them LMs. Simply put, they're weapons that can hover in the air and wait for their target before diving into them and exploding. I can't say I would be too happy about a $6,000 one-use drone, but the stakes are different in war than they are in you know, commercial drone piloting. Fundamentally, these drones are not made for the long term. This has some implications as to how helpful the LMs will be in the Ukraine-Russian war, but more on that later. The fact that switchblades can loiter is meaningful for a couple of reasons. Firstly, they can wait around until they actually spot their target. This avoids civilian casualties since the drone can be called off if a target isn't successfully identified or if civilians would be caught up in the blast radius. Secondly, they can be used for more than just blowing up targets. Switchblades are equipped with sensors, a GPS, and a live camera feed. All of these things help the drones find their targets, but they're also useful in scouting out areas and tracking enemy movements. Up until they fly into their target and explode, switchblade drones are an invaluable tool for surveillance. Portability is even more important in a military context than it is for commercial drone pilots. For that reason, some switchblade drones can easily be carried around in a backpack. That's a pretty different experience than some of the US military drones we've seen in the past, like the Predator. Now, I'm used to launching my drones by hand or off the ground if need be, but these tactics don't cut it for switchblades, which are launched out of a cannon-like tube that you place on the ground. The last thing you need to know about switchblades is that they're heavily autonomous, as in they fly themselves completely without a pilot. The operator of a switchblade has three jobs, telling the switchblade what its target is, giving the switchblade the all clear, and issuing a wave off if the mission needs to be aborted for whatever reason. Now all of this is some pretty fascinating stuff, but switchblade drones aren't created equal. There are actually three models the Switchblade 300, the Switchblade 600, and the Blackwing. As of right now, in this moment, we don't for sure know which model the US has sent to Ukraine. The Switchblade 300 is an older, smaller model originally released in 2011. The technology is still cutting edge in many ways, but it goes to show you that Switchblades aren't new, or at least the Switchblade 300 isn't. This model weighs about 5.5 pounds, flies just 15 minutes at a time, and is designed to be portable by backpack. All of these factors make it a great option for small infantry units. What the Switchblade 300 can't do is destroy armored vehicles or pierce heavy armor. It's also slower clocking in at 63 miles per hour cruise speed and 100 miles per hour dash speed and has a shorter range than the Switchblade 600, which does limit its usage. The 3 is comparatively cheap and it's the obvious choice for tracking enemy movements. Still, there's no denying that it gets outclassed by the Switchblade 600 in some ways. On the other side of the spectrum, the newer Switchblade 600 was released in 2020 and has yet to see any experience. I mean, at least as far as the public is aware. The Switchblade 600 is faster with a cruise speed of 70 miles per hour and a dash speed of 115 miles per hour. And it's 10 times the weight of the 300. It embodies the idea of a lingering missile more than the Switchblade 300, but its use cases aren't the same at all. Yes, it can fly for up to 40 minutes, and yes, it can hit armored vehicles, but it doesn't have the same capacity to be used in reconnaissance as a Switchblade 300. The Blackwing is in an entirely 
different category than the other two Switchblades, although its specs are quite similar to that of the Switchblade 300. Firstly, black wings are classified as loitering reconnaissance systems rather than loitering munitions because they lack the explosive warheads of other switchblades. It's pretty unlikely that this is the kind of drone that the US has shipped to Ukraine since black wings are built explicitly to be launched from underwater submarines. Ukraine isn't a landlocked country since it shares a border with the Black Sea, but it still doesn't make much sense for the US to prioritize sending a drone that launches from submarines over drones that have much more explosive capability. In the grand scheme of a war, 100 small five pound drones doesn't seem like a big contribution, but the 100 unmanned aerial systems being deployed to Ukraine might not mean literally 100 drones. According to journalist Michael Weiss, each system has 10 drones for a total of 1,000 switchblades. Whether or not Weiss is right, it's not unreasonable to think that each package could have more than one drone enclosed. It's also very possible that the shipment is a combination of different Switchblade models, especially since both the Switchblade 300 and the Switchblade 600 have clear use cases in the Ukraine-Russian war. The Switchblade 300 has already had chances to prove its worth on the battlefield. It made its debut in Afghanistan in the aftermath of 9-11, where it was successful enough to have the US order more than 4,000 switchblades. With orders that large early in the switchblade's career, it's safe to say that the switchblade had already found its place in the military's repertoire. After that, switchblades have likely been in common use by the US military in certain war zones. Back in 2015, the broken remains of switchblades were found in Izra, Syria. In the case of the Ukraine-Russian war, it seems likely that the US has sent over the switchblade 600. The Russians have more tanks in their army than every other country in the world. At a reported 12,400 tanks compared to Ukraine's 2,586. The Switchblade 300 has no ability to harm these tanks, making it less relevant for fighters in Ukraine. That being said, surveillance still has a role to play. Aside from making battles more efficient, surveillance could help with evacuations and help prevent civilian casualties by tracking the Russian military's movements. That's a lot of heavy information, and the situation itself is even heavier. But setting that aside, I'm in love with the technology that's behind the operation of these Switchblade drones. It's incredible watching drone technology grow and evolve in each context. Of course, Switchblades aren't going to be the magic tech solution for Ukraine, even if they have the potential to change the tides in the favor of Ukraine. A shipment of only 100 self-destructive LMs could be used up within a week. I'd love for the war to be over in a week as much as everyone else, but it's just not likely that the drones in the shipment will have that long-term impact. On the other hand, the support that the US and other countries are offering Ukraine likely will have a long-term impact. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, the biggest compliment to me is if you could share it with someone else that would also enjoy it. Of course, hit subscribe to stay up to date on drone news and tips. If you're interested, I also do online educational consulting and hands-on workshops where I teach you how to fly over whales and dolphins. More information is on my website and in the links below. I'll see you in the next video.